Yeah. Let's start off with um, the Nigerian movies generally. What's your What's your impression? What's your opinion? Okay, so of Nigerian movies, two thousand and fifteen. Okay, the, the industry. I think the industry did great. As much as I could, I watched a lot of movies. Um, I went for stage plays or stage productions as well. The industry was great for 2015. It could be better, and I think more work still needs to go into it. Mm. Yeah. Do we start with the worst or the best? <laughs> <laughs> I think since the year is rounding up, we should look. We should do the best. Okay, we let's do, do it. The best let's, let's do the that best. That I've, I've reviewed so far. So I will kick off with. Um, my number five for the year will be Sheyi Baba Tokwe's Lunchtime Heroes. Hmm. So it was a family drama. I think it was a good production. For one, he's, he pays attention to detail. He picks the best acts. And he ventures into where people will naturally not go. Hmm. So it was a family drama. If you follow Nollywood so well, you'll notice that most of our movies are skewed towards adults and maybe young adults, so youth, but nothing for children. Mm. And then Lunchtime Heroes did justice to that, so he focused on kids. Mm. And he got great acts to... Interpret the roles. Yes, he did. Mm. Yes, he did. So it was, a, it was a fantastic one. I enjoyed it. Um, my number four would be The Visit. Yes, The Visit is the name of the title of the uh, movie. It, um, it stars Inse Ekpe Etem and Blossom Chuku. It was a four-man cast movie, and we saw four couples living in a block of flats, and they have totally different lives. Hmm. So one is rather on the loud side, the next is prim, proper, and well put together. So you know what goes on when you're living in a block of flats with neighbors that are totally different from you. It was, it, there was suspense, there was intrigue. Hmm. And it was funny. It was really, really <laughs> funny. Um, the Visit was a 2015 production, and I really enjoyed that one as well. Um, I'll move on to my number, number three, three, and yeah. that will be Iyori. Okay. Now, Iyori was a 2014 production, spilled into 2015, but it was a good production. Hey. I had goosebumps when hmm. I was watching it. They focused, yes, it's a Bini movie. The um, translation of Iyori is The Return. Hmm. So it was a really, really good production brought to us by Frank Raja Arese. Wow. And I've seen a couple of his Ghanaian movies or movies that are normally shot in Ghana, and I was just blown away by this, this movie. So it featured the likes of Rita Dominic, Joseph Benjamin, Paulo Basili, um, Okanwa Shnadze. She's mm. a Ghanaian or Cameroonian, I'm not too sure. But it was it was great, as in the Benin Kingdom will will be proud of this production, as mm. in from the lines to the costumes to the editing. So I watch movies a lot. If okay. if if you have unnecessary scenes, you can tell. You don't want to get to the end. You're dragging it mm. along. You can tell. With this production, every step of the way, you could see that editing some process was put into play and Whoa. I totally I really really enjoyed and I'm very proud of the Benin heritage there was the historical aspect of it it was I, I'm talking about it now and I totally enjoyed it I, mm, I watched it ten times I can see the nostalgic <laughs> I watched it ten times Whoa. and the costumes were fantastic mm. there was a Yoruba aspect of it where Ondo, Ondo mm. was the state which is you closest know they to Benin borders, so yes so you get so where I'm coming from a Nebali so um, you, as in, stretch. You, you couldn't have hit the nail on the head more because the Benin and the Ondo people share borders. Yes. There was that interaction Chemistry. between, hmm. it was fantastic. He brought it to bed. Okay. So that was my number three oh. movie, movie of 2015. Best. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, my number two will be Invasion 1897. Whoa. Invasion 1897, also the Benin people, I, I believe because it has a rich cultural heritage, which the Yoruba people also have. And they have done quite a number of movies. If you watch Oduduwa back in the day, so mm. you will know that there have been quite a number of movies as it, as it relates to the Yoruba culture. But the Benin people just brought it home with the in, with Invasion 1897. And it was directed by Lancelot Oduwa in Maswen. He did a fantastic job. Props was good. As in, he, it might not be the best, but that he considered it. I think he gets a plus. Costumes could be better, but it was a good production. It gave us history 
of yeah. what the Benin people, how you see all those um, artifacts and you're like, oh, yes, it's great, but they came from Nigeria, they came from somewhere. So there was history with that production, and I totally I think the Benin, enjoy um, that. The Benin people, they really have rich cultural heritage. I don't you doubt know that. that. Yeah. I think if Nollywood can actually delve into that um, field, cultural. there will be so much movies turned out of that, that space. Yes, really? I believe that if, if, you, are a watcher, um, if you watch movies, mm. you can tell even from the foreign movies, there is no way you don't see that come to bed. And you will notice that some of the great movies that take away awards are movies that focus on heritage, that focus on culture. the culture. You can't go wrong with those movies. I'm not saying that we shouldn't because go Because you ahead. actually connect with the people. Yes, especially if you don't know at all. So that's why I said, like, the Eores and the Vision 1894s, if you're a Benin person and you don't know your history, that would have brought you up to yeah. speed. That <laughs> movie would have brought you up to speed. So mm. I give kudos to Lancelot Odua for that um, from a a Vision 1897. He won quite a number of awards yes, as well, recognitions. Yes, he did. You know, and so it, there's nothing as good as when you, you know you work so work. hard and yeah. then somebody t pats you on the back and say, well done. I, I agree. Mm. I totally agree. And he took a risk. So the, f the act he used, his main character, Mike. Fresh face. Fresh huh? face. Fresh face but towering figure. You couldn't miss him if you watched 1887. So you could see him and you were like, oh my God. Oh my, wow. It was, it was just at par. It was a good production. Yeah. And I give kudos to him. So that was my number two. My number one. Oh, I'm holding my breath. <laughs> <laughs> my number one production. <laughs> Ta -da! October 1. Oh, wow. October 1 was one of the most anticipated movies. Hmm. Um, not 2015 but people were looking out for it. Um, the cinemas were filled to the brim. I was supposed to watch the movie October 1st, but I got there late and the cinema was full. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, are you joking? And they're like, okay, when is the next one? So later, I'm like, oh, but it's sold out. So I'm there for one movie. I want and to the buy the next one, one and the other one is sold out. So October 1 was a darling of all productions. I give kudos to Kuluna for Lion. He is also a big risk taker. So he uses acts that we, will, we haven't seen. So his main um, villain, I will call in the movie, is a total unknown. He's into the industry now and he's getting other things to do, but nobody will say they had seen him prior to October 1. Hmm. And then he, the partnership between himself, that's Kunle Afolayo, and Tunde Babalola, the writer of the movie. It was fantastic. Mm. There was suspense. Mm. It might have been. It might not be the suspense we are used to when we watch our other foreign productions, but it was. It was suspense nonetheless. Mm. Something that you rarely see in our Nigerian productions. And he did a fantastic job. He has been picking up his accolades. So from the AMVCAs to the AMAs to the AFRIFs, he's been picking up his accolades and. He didn't spare any expense when it came to that production. He, he didn't spare. Yeah, any he was expense. actually on the show, and when yeah. he talked about. You know, him owing <laughs> banks and all. <laughs> I said that's so, a very big risk to take. What but you if you believe in something, I think mm. I think it's worth the risk. It's not easy in the industry. And when they have productions as good as the ones that I've mentioned, you begin to appreciate what goes into producing a movie. Mm. It's not cheap. Mm. It's not cheap. Again, viewers are maturing. You understand? I say that They're all exposed. the time. They're exposed. Yes. They're exposed. Yes. So you can't, you can't even afford to insult their intelligence by trying to do those make-believes that even a child would laugh at and say, oh, what is this? What is this? You so know? You, you hit the nail on the head. People, if you don't know, your audience is intelligent. Hmm. Some of these productions, especially productions like October 1, even Shei Baba Tokwe's movie, it takes them four months for post-production. That means attention. Some people detail. takes it, it takes longer. I'm not saying some people takes, but attention to detail is going into that post-production. Hmm. Some people might um, also argue that, come, is it because of the hype around some of these movies? Because sometimes, again, mm. you know this hype has a way of eating into your psyche. Okay. And like when you say the best or the worst uh, yeah, looking production. human being, you know. Ah, okay. You know, sometimes you, you say, oh, the sexiest man alive, the sexiest woman alive, and you look at them and you're like, what does, what really makes this person sexy? sexy. Mm. And before you know what is happening, you gradually, unconsciously start yeah. accepting that person as the sexiest. Meanwhile, 
is just some media frenzy. Okay. So could that also be, be factored into what you have, the lineup of the five best movies? Could it be the hype around it okay. that has also helped in Help. putting them on those um, platforms you put them? So I get you when you mention the hype, but at the same time, some of these productions I stumbled on. Okay. Do you understand? So it's not as if I had heard about it. I go round. I don't necessarily focus on what is showing in the cinemas oh, or what I've hyped. heard. Yeah. Mm. So it's not the hype at all. Okay. <laughs> so we flip the page now to the worst. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough wow. call, but it's, yes, it's it something is. we have to talk about. Yes. And that's why I said I liked it. I liked it when you said that your audience is not stupid. Yes. And that's what happened with these movies. Some of them I watched in the cinema, some I watched at home. And I don't only review movies that are English in nature, I also look into Yoruba movies as well. My number five worst movie was Omoge Shoki. I think the name. Worse, eh? Yeah, worse. They could have done better. I don't think there's a better for that movie, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, but I don't think there's a better for okay, that movie. Okay, tell us about it. So the movie focuses on three um, ladies. Um, I believe it's trying to focus on the ills and evils of prostitution. Okay. Or prostitution. The production was horrible. That's one word to put it. When you say horrible, what exactly do you mean? So directing was... You need to bring out the best angle to your people. The well, direction wasn't... Um, disjuncted? No, it was everything rolled into one. The script, I know they were translating or transcribing. The script wasn't well thought through. So you bring two, and two of them are major actors and major actresses. After 20 years plus in the industry, I don't believe they should be doing productions such as these ones. Yes, you're trying to point out the evils of a certain um, societal ill, but I don't think they should have done. So the script was a no-no. The production quality was poor. So there were times where I couldn't hear. There were times when you had the dark corners and edges and shadows. Costumes. Costumes was a no-no. Can you beat that? Yeah. So the interpretation was all wrong. Yeah. I had, there was a part one and part two, and I had to watch part two. Oh, no. I can't do a review and not do it. So I had to put myself <laughs> through part two, and I'm like... <laughs> Part two, in some cases, is an extension of part one. So it's not part two, part two, but we couldn't finish everything in one. So we have to do an extension. So my God. I have to I, put myself I, you see, I still, I'm still <laughs> having a hard time wrapping my head around why people really bother to put, I mean, movie producers. You know, sometimes mm. the part two is unnecessary. I agree. Part two of some of these movies are mm. unnecessary. And then they even stretch it to part three. Yeah, hitting the nails right on the head. I, can't, yeah, I couldn't have said it any better. My number four was Baby Oku. Hmm. Baby Oku stars Mercy Johnson. And um, Baby Oku, I think, goes to America. So it follows the line of all the other someone, someone goes to America themed movies. So we had Osofia in London, that kind of. So Baby Oku is in America. That was. And it stars Mercy Johnson. And I, so it was another movie that had a part one and part two. And I watched part one. I think at the time, Mercy Johnson was pregnant. So I give kudos to her for being able to act while she's pregnant and putting herself out there. But my God, I was like, what in the world am I watching? What's going on? So production was clear and it was clean. But the script was a no-no. So like a village champion, gets impregnated by someone that just came into the village to visit his mother and she's now flown to America to join her husband and puts her husband through hell. Execution, I don't know. The script wasn't as intelligent as I would have expected it to be. Hmm. And that's where that came in. So you can take stuff out of it. Be careful who you meet is one thing. Or when you go to the village, ensure that you keep, play safe if you are that kind of person. But so apart from that, mm. the storyline that you, you yeah. that's probably misleading and not, yeah. not, not sinking. Mm. What else is wrong with that? I Maybe think directing cool. was also some come see, come see. Okay. So my number three will be um, Dr. Bello. Mm. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. The oh, like, almighty Dr. Bell. I can feel some people strangling me like right now. <laughs> and I was, so 
Oh, Dr. Bello was one of those movies I had heard about on TV and I'd seen um, trailers and I was like, oh my God, Vivica Fox, Isaiah Washington. The cast. Genevieve, and so it wasn't so much even the Nigerian cast, but I think yeah. Dr. Bello was one of those movies that I'd watched, what, that had a Nigerian and foreign cast and I was like, oh my God, I want With to watch it. With all those people, Isaiah yes. Washington. Yes, on I, it I as well. To, and he was fantastic. I don't give him props for that. But um, so after I, I watched it, and when it started off, it started off the sh first scene, and all the shots were in America. So America really made sense. It was short, it was sharp, it was straight to the point. Isaiah was delivering to his own lines. The same thing with Vivica. Everything was going on well. Um, I'm not a fan of Jimmy Lewis, so. I'm not going to talk about him so much, but everything was going on well until Isaiah Washington now decided to go to come to Nigeria. And if you're talking about unnecessary scenes, oh, I have not is seen it a make up so for lost time or what? What exactly is this unnecessary scene about? I don't know. What, in your opinion, I form this <laughs> stretching things beyond the limits? I can't explain. I can't explain it. I can't for the love of me I can't explain it so when you show them getting into the car driving on the road getting to this getting to that or the person is climbing a rock and you show him climbing the rock oh. it's a process which some people even say when they're watching certain movies they're like oh how did the person get there yes people want to know but they don't need to follow that process there were so many things they could have taken out of that production that would have made editing clean and sweet. And on point. And on point. So I was so, the movie ended up being a two hours plus movie. Something that I'm sure he could have finished in maybe an hour, 30 minutes. It's a good storyline, let's mm. not get it twisted. We're That's moving. Why. Yes, we're well, <laughs> moving. <laughs> My number two is One Night in Vegas. Mm. This production is a Ghanaian production um, because it features Yvonne Nelson and John Dumelo. It features Jamie John Lewis as well. And it was shot in America. Now, I might not have been to Vegas, but I could tell production was just. So, would I say continuity? They had this scene where they kept on showing parts of Vegas before they showed the inside. And so, for some reason, it was the same thing they were showing every time they showed outside Vegas. So it's cut and join. Yeah. Okay. And then the script wasn't so powerful. I mentioned it again, your audience is intelligent. Don't think people will not notice it because mm. they are looking. Okay. Yeah. My number one. Oh, I'm holding my breath again. Yes. Um, one last word. Um, this movie stars Mitchell, Majid Mitchell, it stars Uri AK, it stars Uti Wachuku, it stars Yukaria Nunobi, and Majid is a Nigerian movie director who leaves the set of his production and runs to the aid of his mother who he believes is ill. I like Majid, I think Majid is, is a brilliant actor and I think he's easy to work with when it comes to Nigerian movies because he's featured in a lot of Nigerian movies and he's Ghanaian. But this movie was, I don't know, it wasn't compelling. The script wasn't right. So he's a director. They're showing him direct. But I just wonder what's going on behind the cameras even when they are shooting because some pieces were just up and everywhere. It comes off. It exaggerated. Mm, that's the <laughs> word as in, it comes exaggerated like, really? The one last <laughs> word didn't drop the word. Mm -mm. Didn't drop no, it. Not at all. Didn't it drop didn't. it like it's no, hot. It didn't drop it like it's hot. <laughs> it didn't at all. So okay. those 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 productions make up my five best and my five, five worst. worst. And could be better movies. Yeah, they could be better. Okay, so we've taken stock of the best and the yes, and the have. worst. Yes. Yeah, so for you, that. who would you say really cut it for the best actress and the best actor? Wow. For 2015. So I didn't watch all productions and some of them are under the radar, some of them are being done. For actor, I'll say Blossom, although I have two, but I'll say Blossom Chuku Chuku Okay. Yeah. Um so Blossom has I think he has really done good for the year. He started off with romantic roles. 
but he has found a way to be in other productions. Okay. So not he was casted. not typecasted. Blossom is best his, actor. Yes, he's my best actor, and, and he's on a role. Um, actress will be tough. <sighs> I'll go for Kemi Lala Kindoju. Mm. Um, maybe because I love theater. I've seen her in um, a lot of theater productions, and with every time she's doing something different. And stage cannot be compared to movies. I'm mm, sorry. Yeah. So she does a good job when she's on stage. She's utterly believable. She's she's humble. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> I had to bring that into play, but and so for I enjoy upcoming, watching her. Upcoming, yeah. Uh, I mean, an upcoming art that uh, we should look out for to, in 2016. There are host of them, but I'll say Kemi. I'll stick to Kemi. Um, for actor, it won't be so much blossom. I would say Demi Okolawo. So Demi did a couple of productions this year, and for one bit he ventured into stage. So I'm coming back to stage again, and he he excelled in, on stage. Hmm. So he's one to look out for, and hmm. he started with series. Then he came into feature films. In fact, he did short films. So let me say he did short films. So he did series, he did short films, then he moved into feature films. And then he's doing stage. He has a trend. He's one to look out for. Hmm. I think people should give him. Okay, a break. so yeah. if we want to, if we want to cap it, mm. 2015, mm. in the eye of um, the viewers, yeah. when it comes to Nigerian movies, okay, what would it be? Wow, that's a tough one. Yes. Ooh. Are we progressing? Are we? Is there a retrogression, or we are moving forward? We are moving forward. Um, it might not be at the pace that we want, mm -hmm. but we are moving forward. We could do it better. Okay, mm. so we just um, <laughs> hope that um, the stakeholders and the relevant bodies are watching. Yes. Mm? Yeah, they are, they are under the influence of this program and yes. uh, they take a cue from all the things we have said or yes. you have said yes. uh, and yes. um, make the amends that needs to be made. Mm. Where we could have gone on and on and on and yes, on, but unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> time is always of the essence. Yes. So we want to say thank you very much thank for you gracing for having me. Thank you thank very, you very much. much. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and so viewers, that's the much we can take on this week's edition of Saturday Night. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next week, be kind to one another and stay well.